Yes, 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 yes. Welcome to another great show of at and the Media. We have a lot of stuff to do today. As a matter of fact, I have several special guests today. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, our first guest today is going to be Jennifer Wilson. Okay, it's Miss Jen with her book, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, a newsletter, a, a, a composite of newsletters. Uh, it's called MJSO, Miss Jen's Shout Out. And... Our second guest, which we know uh, uh, for the years when I first started in the, uh, up here in, in Moreau in, in the television industry, uh, uh, I had Reverend Willis. Well, today we're going to have that special guest. It's going to be his wife, uh, Kimberly Willis. And she's going to share something with us. It's going to be very deep because uh, 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 I think she was uh, three-stage cancer. So this, it's, this is going to be a very powerful testimonial day today. So I tell you what, and her book is titled Walk Through Fire, A Survivor Story. So I tell you what, let's get this party started and we'll be right back after this. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hey, you know what? Thank you. Thank you, Miss Jen, for coming mm -hmm. on board. My pleasure. Oh, my goodness. Indeed, you, you indeed. Know, 
You, you know what, before I, uh, we get to start talking about a little bit of testimonial about you, okay, because I'm sure you also have a powerful testimony. Matter of fact, that, uh, uh, today it's going to be a very serious, powerful testimony with, with both guests. And before we get to yours, I want to I wanna know something about your book here, because first of all, it's M <coughs> Miss, uh, oh, let's say yeah. this way, MJSO, it's M period, J period, S period, O period. Uh, and to find, if you want to find it in the booksellers, you know, online or in brick and mortar, uh, it's easier. If you can't find it, the easy way to do it is go to Miss Jen's shout out. Okay, it's, it's the fastest, quicker way to do it. It's just say Miss Jen's shout out. Yeah. And that's a matter of fact, that's what MJSO stands for. Yes. Okay, now, what's interesting is, which I'm kind of curious, is why did you take your newsletters? Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you made a compilation of your newsletters. Why did you do that to create this book? Because actually, it's, it's again, it's issues 1 through 1 through 30. Yes. Or issues 1 to 130. Whew. <laughs> but why did you do that anyway? God gave it to me back in April of 2015. And, you know, everything that's going on in this world, um, it got to the point where I couldn't sleep. And, you know, I was wrestling at and, and, and night and the morning hours. And, you know, pretty much like, uh, you know, Jacob, when he wrestled, you know, and got his leg. Anyway, we're going yes. on with the other. But I, I couldn't sleep. So I got up one day. I pulled out my laptop in my apartment. I just started writing. And it impacted so, so many different people, and they told me how they were uh, moved by what was in the first newsletter, the very first one. Then I said, oh, okay, good. So I'm going to sit down, so I started another one. Because God give it to me, and as God give them to me, then that's how I do it. I take no credit other than being obedient and doing what mm -hmm. God has commissioned me to do. So thus, I call it my NJSO newsletter ministry. Not that I'm a pastor, but we are missionaries who believe in God, indeed, and we're going to have yes. our missionary day this Sunday. And isn't it ironic? I am the chairman of the program committee for our missionary nice. day nice. for my church. And um, th I'm looking forward to that. And, and matter of fact, uh, this is one of, I, I am so excited about this, Mr. Hill. You all did a beautiful job on the book. And I noticed the first person I introduced this MJSO newsletter ministry book to, everybody who I hand it to, they just kind of hold it and they be like, wow this is beautiful they always and then they go right to one of the newsletters that's uh -huh. what god sent them to you know and that's just okay. like wow okay. and i look at it as this is god this is god just like the little two-year-old that was found that was in the forest she's autistic that was nothing but god god mm -hmm. for that child to be out there 28 hours they said it was uh, 20 28 hours she's out there as a day and four hours and then make her way to a cottage, and, and the man said she did like this, and I did like that. <laughs> I thought that was so nice. <laughs> I said, that's God. And the little girl that fell off of the third or second floor of the apartment building. And so that's a lot of what I incorporate into the MJSO newsletter ministry as I go about as God give it to me. I put it out there because a lot of people, I've asked them, did they see that? No, I didn't see it or something. So it's kind of like I'm an intermediary in between, well, whatever they didn't see and also there's verses you know i use from the bible and all praise is glory and honor to god because you know i'm just the vessel through which he works so um yes, yes. I, like i said you are doing a beautiful job and i'm just so excited about the mjs newsletter ministry <laughs> you know get it out mm -hmm. to everybody who will you know because everybody you know not, and everything in there is not for everybody just like everything and well, there how about are, this? That we'll make it this way. There's, there's a little bit of something for somebody yes, in there. indeed. Which is for everybody. Yes. I'll do it that way. Yes. The book is not meant for everybody. Right. But a little bit of something for somebody. Yes. Which yes. is basically to everybody. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Indeed. Because, um, you know, like I said, there's uh, many people who've come up to me and told me, mm -hmm. uh, why didn't you give me? <laughs> they asked me. And really, that makes me feel, because I don't want to slight anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not hiding behind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And indeed, I try to use yes. that. Yes, yes. You know, um, and they, in Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6, is, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path. And indeed, 
that's what I look forward to is God directing my path and, you know, doing what it is that is pleasing to his sight. Mm -hmm. So, and saying all that. (laughs) 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 I'm excited, I'm telling you. I'm excited and and I'm always praying, Lord, please lead me, guide me. I prayed Uh for, I I prayed last night, I prayed this morning. You know, touch here, touch here, touch here. And that's, that's it. The mind, mm-hmm. the mouth, and the heart. Because, you know, a lot of people, the devil's busy. And he wants to turn a lot of people's thinking away from God, you know. And, and it's, it's sad, you know. It's, it's just really sad, you know. The people, and it says, you know, if you read Matthew 28, and a lot of, you know, the, the, the verses in the book of the, the Bible will tell you, mm-hmm. um, how things are going to be about in the last days and um it's it's really really coming apart i mean i personally myself i don't see why anybody would not believe the bible you know i was talking to a friend of mine uh mm-hmm. last night and telling her i said uh you know i she, she said she believed more in science than she believed in god i said what i said you wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for god and jesus died for all of us you know and you know, how can you say something like you can't believe in God? Oh, man. But I mean, hey, to each his own, you know, but I'm going to plant the seed. God does the watering. Uh, yes, I just look at it when, when they look into Scientology. It, it, it's it's uh, uh, science is knowledge. OK. And, and you know, uh, God is omnipresent. Amen. Okay, so that's the big difference. Yes. Everything is knowledge to grow in knowledge. So you can't take knowledge. And, and I remember in, in the. Uh, when I used to do uh, 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 out from the military to uh, uh, airlines and then to start dabbling into uh, 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 electronics. Mm-hmm. Now they just call it technology. But electronics, you know how you do the, the colas and the C and the forward slash right. and all that stuff. That's where you get your HTTP and all that stuff. Now what happens is, is that the, uh, and even now, the schools uh, 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 on born learning, or they call it higher learning, is that, he says, I, I'm, I'm, this is what actually happened. He tapped on top of a computer, right? This is when it started back in the 80s with a big old monitor. <laughs> they tapped on it. And we all stopped and looked at it. And he looked at it again. He looked at us and he just tapped on it. And, and, and he says, you know what that is? And it says, what? And he says, he says it's, it's a little different from me because I'm Catholic. And I just looked at him. <laughs> and and, he, and uh, 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 I mean, it was a black guy. It's a gentleman. And, and uh, um, we, we thought, you know, you lost your mind? You know, like it just went from teaching us about electronics to going into religion. Right. But he wanted to eliminate skepticism in a way. But okay. he did something that was interesting. He says, he says this here is a God. It says we're like little gods. With a little now, G. Yes, <laughs> little gods. Now, that part, we started thinking about it. Okay. Now, what he did was try to based upon an intellect that we are neutral, okay? Being neutral, that's why people say, you know, whether they believe in God or not, in mm. technology and science, but it says it's about knowledge. If, if you was a caveman compared to somebody that's in with, uh, you know, flying around in some spaceship or whatever, uh, uh. they would think that would be a God, okay? But actually it's an a individual being or whatever. What he's saying is that that was created Mm-hmm. from a man, but we weren't created from the machine. So what it is is that as the machine grows, if we don't understand what we're doing, whether we're doing hashtag or, you know, if we can't use our phone, the phones become a, 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 a greater God and we become a lesser God to it because of what? Knowledge. Uh-huh. God knows all knowledge. If you're getting that, the picture is God knows everything and knows all knowledge. We don't know all knowledge. So it separates us from that. So in the word of God, he said himself, we are like what? Little gods. Okay? Remember now, we learn from the basics. Remember say we learn from from the what? The vegetables or, or what's it? From milk to vegetables to meat. Huh. So there's a learning process, a learning stage. Now, where did that come from? That didn't come from the knowledge of man. That came from who? Science obviously. No. Uh-huh. Came what? from God. What? He teaches oh. us. He teaches how to, he teaches how to crawl, and then he teaches how to walk. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so actually, Scientology is about knowledge. 
And we have to keep in our mind that this is knowledge. When you graduate from, from school, right? Mm -hmm. From school, whether elementary or high school, is what? Knowledge. You've got to learn. Okay. And, and you separate knowledge from God himself. Mm -hmm. And what they did was says, okay, you know what? If we learn this much knowledge, we'll become a God. Hmm. And what he's saying is, no, you're not God. This is not Zeus. This is not a Greek mythology. <laughs> you're just man. But indeed, our word tells us to study to show ourselves approved, approved, approved of, unto, unto God. God. A work, a work man that needs to be ashamed, not to be ashamed rightly, rightly dividing, dividing the word of truth. Of truth. So, See? we study the right way. Yes. And we don't have no problem with this technology stuff because it's really getting out of hand, to tell you the truth. The, you uh -huh. know, they have a controversy going on now about this facial recognition mess. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and yes. The, see, man is going so fast on this uh -huh. technology mess that they're not looking at the long run, the end part. And, you know, that's what anything that well, I told you about. I pray, touch this, this, my heart, you know. But yes. they don't look. There's, all, like you said, the three parts, the meat and going on through the milk and going on. But that's also a process when you dealing with the Lord. Salvation is free, indeed. Yes. And I look at a lot of this technological things and how they're trying to really push us into, okay, every time, everywhere you go, it seems uh, you have to have an email or uh, we need uh, a credit card on. Then they want to cry about identity theft. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Well, that was foretold anyway, even up to Revelation, that was foretold what's going to happen. That's a forced way to. But that don't mean you have to. That is a way to induce, remember back in the day, and it's from the 70s, because I know since my dad, when he was preaching and stuff, they were talking about, and my grandfather was uh -huh. about the mark of the beast, right? Yeah, you know indeed. About the mark of the beast. And then all of a sudden, you're going like, oh, I'm not getting this mark. I'm, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> putting chips in babies and all yeah. that. Because I remember they did that to my uh, uh, our two daughters. Uh -huh. And I was like, whoa, whoa, what, what is this? And they had this little cylinder thing to put in to regulate about the people. Uh, and uh, your daughters? Yeah, yes, yes. They're grown now. And they have kids, uh, one of them has children. But uh, uh, well, plenty of, well, a few children. <laughs> but uh, um, wow. it was to uh, uh, keep children, in the teens, they were testing to keep them from becoming pregnant. Huh. Okay. Then they would do, then afterwards they were uh, uh, decided to start giving uh, uh, babies. If you know in the news, the babies these little chips because there were locators. Well, no, they and had them they on the dogs. You remember the animals? The but see, that's the, the whole thing about about the system. And and, and, and we, if we look at it in, in retrospect, mm -hmm. on the surface that they what they're doing is making sure that we're controlled in some way, and just to make it easier for you. Look at the currency of our bills, the money right now. Oh, yeah. Our money right now is, is going to be fading away in a few more years. We won't even be using dollar bills because they went from credit card to debit. And it went from debit card, I'm going to tell you, make it easier than that. <laughs> DHS, food stamps, all that is on a card. You are not going to, and, and, and then they use it to employ on the homeless. Like, look, we're not giving you the money to get out there and get some dope. We're going to give you a card. So everything goes on a card. Now these cards, okay. Uh, 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 these cards the government gives you is because they're able to regulate it, okay? So everything that we're going to sit on up is like, whoa! So everything's becoming electronic. We are forced in electronic world, mm -hmm. the uh, robotic world, mm -hmm. going to the stores, look at Amazon. Amazon's already doing it. And let me tell you something right now, AI, artificial intelligence, it's already here. We know. It's already here. It's running almost everything we have now. Right. Including employments. And I'm seeing on TV that why why is nobody's mouth matching what they're saying? That is driving oh, me crazy. Oh, that was a trip. That, oh, that is goodness, driving yes. me crazy. I mean, even now, I got um, these Tyler Perry had four of his <laughs> shows well, on this look thing. Look at Amazon stores now. A Amazon stores. If you walk in the store, all you got to do is walk in, okay? You don't even have to pull, pull your wallet out your card. You just, um, or card out your wallet. <laughs> okay, uh, um, you just walk in. Okay. I, I put that. I put it out for everybody to see this. Right. You walk in. You go in. Uh, 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 at one time, AT and T got in trouble for that because AT said put everything in your cart back in the, in the eighties, and then you stroll through the line. And it's supposed to ring up. And it rings up. Yes, it's supposed to ring it up. Yeah. Now, because AT and T, they shut AT and T down just for that moment. We had like a seven to eight year gap. No AT and T. You hear nothing from them after that because it wasn't supposed to come out yet. Then all of a sudden. Uh, uh, ATT went another direction, and then uh, Amazon turns around and says, hey, we got a store for you. Uh -huh. And you can go in the store, 
And it's crazy. It's everywhere. It's, it's popping up everywhere. And you just go in, you grab the food, you put it, not even, you have to need a cart. Just put it in the bag and walk out. It already counted everything in your bag uh -huh. because the cart is in your, or in your wallet or in your purse. That is the way today's technology is now. And everything we have is AI now. Everything. Because no matter what we do on our phones, just listen to the servers, on our phones, on our computers. Alexa, they're just telling you off the back, hey, they start off saying Alexa. Uh -huh. And once we start messing with Alexa, remember the lawsuit? The lawsuit with Alexa? Because Alexa saw there was a killing. A guy, a, a guy killed uh -huh. his, his wife and, uh, 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 and he tried to say he didn't. And did, but it's recorded because Alexa's designed. Anything that says, are we allowed to have your pictures? Are we allowed to have your, uh, your voice? Are we allowed to have this and that? That's all designed when you say yes, uh -huh. everything in the system is connected to it. And we just got finished watching it on the business news this morning. Everything is connected now that they're, they're, the DOJ, Department of, Just, uh, uh, Department of Justice, are saying that it, what we're, what this, what's happening now, this morning, it says what's happening now is called a, um, a, 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 a more than, uh, than an evasion. It, it, well, it's, it is an evasion. It's like a takeover. But, but it's like, like a, 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 um, <laughs> what's happening is that we're doing some type of illegal trading. It is legal, but it is illegal. So the Department of Justice is trying to figure this out because the fact that now we're not the only ones that we're doing it, but these companies that's here in America is connected with foreign countries. And once we do the allow thing, the A-L-L-O-W, uh -huh. guess who else gets it? Right. And that's the problem. They finally, they finally boop, realized it this morning or on business news, realized that everything cannot be allowed. And once mm -hmm. you do that, the networks are open for everyone. We as normal people don't see that. But you know what? I, I know we're running out of time, but I do need to, need to share some with uh, yeah. Neil. I need to ask you a question. Okay. How about giving us a testimony? Oh, testimony. Yeah, give us a little quick. Wow, testimony. I got so many. <laughs> yes. We done gotten technology. Let's get back to the testimony what God has done in our lives. Oh my God, God is so good all the time, and all the time He is good. My testimony is I have never wanted for anything. And despite any and everything that I go through in my life, God is always making a way. And, you know, I don't care how low you get, uh, homeless or whatever it may be. And I'm sure a lot of us can testify to that, even myself. Well, I got both hands up. I so. know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I see you out of dumpster. Wait a minute. Okay. But when you are I'm a cool. child, I'm, I'm going to say this too. When you are a child of God, I don't care what you're going through, how low you can get, you always represent because you're a child of the king. Nobody in any homeless state I've been in, unless they were snooping around, <laughs> whatever, but they cannot tell because I always make sure I get, wash myself, put on clean clothes, keep on moving on. You don't know if I slept in my car, my truck, or whatever, but I always, represent because God always make a way despite any and everything that I'm going through mm -hmm. he makes a way hallelujah and oh, I yes. thank him because you know this here this is definitely a blessing God blessed me to do this people were asking for it why don't you publish it and I've had people their orders they coming in so um I thank God mm -mm. I thank God my testimony I thank God for you and, and I, I'm, I'm not gonna put you in the book actually I, I you know uh, um, uh, okay, what is it you Everybody, want? I'm going to share this, uh, and because uh, you, you opened that doorway. I didn't expect you was going to do it that way, but the homelessness. Okay, go ahead. Okay. This is a woman here who did everything. Not only did she, she, you know, she stayed faithful to God. In the church. I'm telling you, this, this is what I'm talking about, the real world. She is home. You wouldn't even tell that she is even homeless. Just, uh, I mean, the day that she walked through, through uh, my door, which I, I didn't want to talk about that, was your publisher. <laughs> but uh, 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 God tr maintained her through, uh, I mean, through the weather, I mean, through, through the disarray, the dismay in the families, the deaths in the family, everything. She still finished doing this book, still going to church, still remain faithful. So anybody that's homeless out there right now that said they can't do it, 
she's living proof because now she has one, she has two uh, published books, one in black and white, one in color. Not only did she show her uh, a presentation, but you would have never, ever known she was homeless. Never known she was homeless. And she is homeless right now. Well, you know, I can't say she's homeless. No, no, right. no, and you know what? Go, go exercise. You exercise with Planet yes. Fitness. Right. You know, I thank God no, for her. No. Oh, oh, well. <laughs> hey, we, we met up there. We, we, right, so we were. Right. And I'm going like, what? <laughs> and you're going, yeah. And I'm going, man. I said, you know, I'm out there pushing the shopping cart. <laughs> she, here she is. God had led her to keep on going, keep on going, maintaining yeah. her vehicles. You never, you wouldn't even know that she was homeless. If you if she, you had to stop and pause and talk. matter of fact, you couldn't unless she would have told you. That is the power of God I'm talking about. Amen. Not Amen. just knowledge. Not me. That's Amen. the power of God. Amen. That's faith. Faith ran over knowledge like the thing to do, okay? Amen. You know what I'm saying? And a matter of fact, I would say uh, uh, knowledge plus understanding uh, uh, equals wisdom. Amen. Okay? The experience. Okay, that's a lot of wisdom. And, and, don't, and I, now, don't let mm -hmm. him keep putting it on my, me, y'all, because him too. Like no, when, well, yeah, when, I'll, I'll, when, he, when God told him to get up, and that is the most, I think that's the most powerful point of his testimony. When he got to his lowest point, and God said, get up and get in the car, right? Walk they told him, get street. up and walk. Get up and, and walk. <laughs> and he did. And now look at him where he at now. And I was putting shopping shop cart for 11 years, okay? <laughs> Home is he down the dumpsters. Ooh, Lord but Lord. the thing is, it and took, tell, you know, mm -hmm. God told me three times to get up, okay? So we know what, and then here you go, you have someone here who God's maintaining the integrity that you show today now, even with the young kids today. Y'all yeah. get me all cheery-eyed up here. <laughs> okay. I know. That now for all the, the youngsters, all of you here, you see that there is no way, there is a way. Yeah. Because you know what, God wants you to have that presentation. Yes. Because who you represent. Right. Okay, so you don't, you know, you fail not. Actually, you get up and keep on walking. She got up and kept going, and she is here today and, and that's why I was I was blessed to see you sitting here today oh, yeah. Yeah. you know and I was saying share about your testimony but I forget you got more deep testimony oh, yeah. but you sitting here that's gonna be in book three I no think. no you drove here you <laughs> yes. sat down here yeah and, and you have a book yes and yet and, and still striving for, for employment and stuff like that oh I got two jobs now so two jobs oh, yes <laughs> two jobs yeah, see, yeah. And, and that was from throughout the year yes throughout yeah. the year I'm not talking about a couple of months I'm talking about working with her for years mm -hmm. and watch the hand of God move on this woman. Oh, Y'all gonna get me started. <laughs> you, you know what? It's a blessing having you on the show. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you are a blessing and thank God for you. Yeah, and, and, and I think you'd be an example of what God can do in a person's life. Amen. In Amen. all conditions, in all situations. Yes. Okay? Thank Amen. You. You're all very right. welcome. You. Very welcome. <laughs> Uh, and I do want you to come back here again pretty soon because I know you have more books coming out. Oh, yes. Okay. One, You're yes. still writing letters. I see oh, the, yes. the church is bringing you up now. Oh, yeah. Interesting, huh? The church is bringing you up now. Oh, yeah. And it's funny, yeah, you still stay faithful to the church. Oh, yeah. Yes. Stay faithful to God and stay faithful to the church yes. through all conditions. That's my that's so, second, second family. That's my second family in my church. And, uh, you've been, what, 40 uh, years or 30 years? 40, 40 three, years? let's see, 74. So that will be 45 this year, right? 45 this year? I hear something like that. Yeah, it's 45 this year. This is the uh, real 74. world in God. Yeah. The real world in God. Yes. This is nothing. That's why I'm trying to get that from that little guy to one up about this right. knowledge. <laughs> this is all pure faith. That's what I was getting to. Yeah. That was pure faith. And we are 100 and, years and old. And led by faith. Now we can apply a little knowledge to learn. Yes. Because we're going to be walking ignorant. Amen. All Amen. right. There, you got it. Amen. Woo! <laughs> all right. Now, you know what? Uh, 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 I think you come on the show. Would have, love to have you back again. Thank you for having me. Yes, okay, I enjoyed myself. Okay, everybody, uh, when we come back, we'll have uh, uh, Sister Kimberly Willis, Reverend Willis's wife. She's also a business owner. I mean, awesome, dynamic. And you know what? Let's continue with this party, and I'll see you right back after this. All right.
Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You know what? It's a blessing to have you here. You. Oh, my goodness. It's a blessing to be here. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm scared to ask. I got my tissue, so I'm scared <laughs> to ask you about, about your testimony. But you are, you're, you're another living, breathing, uh, 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 walking testimony. And, and as a matter of fact, <laughs> this is what's interesting. When I said walking, I looked down and said, walk, yes. Walk through fire. Mm -hmm. she, she's been through it. Been through it. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 Sister Kimberly Willis, uh, uh, do me a favor. I want you to do like this because since now I can, I can do it here. I want you to wave out to your man out there. Hey. Yes, Reverend Willis, <laughs> who helped me grow from, from back in the day. Yeah, I got to give him props on that. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> so while I was there, but now he gets to watch me be a cheery eye. <laughs> uh, I, I think I just got Holy Ghost kidnapped. Uh oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I, this is all right. Okay. This. You, you know what? It, your your book also is astounding. And, and uh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna do this one more time. Okay. This is uh, Kimberly Willis. Walk through fire. Uh, she so been uh, been doing a lot of touring around and stuff. I said, yeah. man, I better start broadcasting her out too, because I'm I'm seeing her everywhere, all through the Facebook thing. I said, you know what? Maybe I have to go ahead and uh, uh, open another doorway in there, because. This book is dynamic. It's a survivor story. Now, this survivor story is it talks about uh, uh, um, you being a well. That is your testimony. Mm -hmm. a, uh, a and your business entrepreneur. Yes. Which is another thing about how the power and the, the, the hand of God moves. Okay, in every different walks of life, and, and no matter if if you if, if you're in, in poverty or if if you're you know, I had to say the president of the United States, but still, hey, you know, God can make things happen. Absolutely. So, you know, you can't be judgmental, but watch the hands of God. In this case here, this miracle, in this case here, uh, 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 Sister Kimberly Willis is a three-stage Breast cancer? Breast cancer, yes. Yeah, breast cancer patient, or I can't even say patient anymore. No, I've been healed from that. Been Thank healed, you. yes, yes, <laughs> yes. She's been healed from that. That's why I couldn't say patient anymore. <laughs> she, it's not patient. She had patience. There you go. Patience. So, so uh, go ahead. Give, give us a testimony. So as you said, I'm a stage 3A breast cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. I was diagnosed in May in 2017. During that wow. time, um, I was working at the bank, uh, at a credit union for 15 years uh, as a manager at the credit union. And uh, I w I'm under the age at the time I was diagnosed, you know, typically women get their mammograms around 40. At the time I was 34. And I just did a self-exam as we have been taught many years ago as, as we grow up as young ladies and into women. The doctors always say that you should always do a self-exam. Here I am doing my monthly exam and in the shower and noticed that I felt a lump. And I waited. And the reason why I waited is not that I didn't want to see about it. Life got in the way. And life has a way of uh, sometimes making you so busy to where you don't take care of certain things that you need to take care of. Yes. yes. So as time and during that same month, and that was in February of 2017, my grandmother had passed away that month as well. And oh, wow. there you go. So again, I wasn't really thinking about this lump that I just discovered because my grandmother just passed away. And also that same month, my husband just been called to pastor um, the church that we are at right now, New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. So I had so many things going on in February. I didn't see about it. A yes. month later, I check it. It's still there. This time work is getting busy. And we all know how sometimes we can be short staff at work and yes. you're doing every and anything to make sure the business is running. So again, I forgot about it, but I still felt that lump. And I said, you know, I really got to go see about it. So here April comes. I finally go and schedule my appointment. And you know, anytime you schedule a doctor's appointment, you can't see them typically the next day. So it was, <laughs> <laughs> it was in May by the time I was uh -huh. able to finally get my appointment. And when, my, when I had the doctor, uh, the appointment with my gynecologist, he didn't even think that it was a lump to really be seen about. It didn't feel like a cancerous lump to him. Mm. However, he still sent me to get uh, a mammogram done, and there you go. I ended up having breast cancer. Wow. Did they say how long it's been there? No, anything? no. 
didn't know. They couldn't determine. They couldn't determine. Didn't know. So through everything, you know, yes. once you get diagnosed, uh, you go through a series of tests, which I explained in the book. Yes. And one of them is a genetic test. So typically, um, in my mind, what I thought uh, people who get breast cancer, you either have to have what is called the BRCA gene, which is a gene that will say that you have a higher chance to get breast cancer. And that comes in BRCA1 and BRCA2. I was negative for both of those. Oh. Also does not run in my okay. family. So I was puzzled on why I was diagnosed with something that was totally random. Well, after doing a little bit of research, found out that 80% of women that are diagnosed with breast cancer mm -hmm. is in the same boat as I am. So in a sense, it's almost more common to get breast cancer with it not having the gene or with having it in your family than someone who is. So that that was pretty interesting so, to find that out. You see, without having a gene, you could have breast cancer. Correct. You still have the gene because I have neither. Oh, oh, so okay. it was totally random for me. I didn't have anything to indicate that I was getting ready to have breast cancer. And remember the age. So typically breast cancer, um, uh, p people who get that, survivors who end up getting it are typically 40 and over. I was 34. And in mm. the African American community, it's actually not uncommon for us to get it in our mid-30s. Wow. Wow, I didn't know that. I thought it was, when well, you said it was actually 40 and older, older or something like that. But you got it at an earlier age. Mm -hmm. So how long did, uh, uh, did you go through, you know, the, uh, uh, the breast cancer, the, the, uh, uh, um, the treatment. Was it, the treatment was it was it painful or? I mean, oh, it was a, just a joy, right? Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I didn't know everybody was trying. Oh my goodness! So the cancer itself <laughs> didn't hurt. Yes, it, it was just a lump for myself. I didn't have any other symptoms. If you Google breast cancer symptoms, I literally only had the lump in my breast. I didn't have any breast. Oh wait pain. a minute! Wait a minute! The, 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 the cancer itself wasn't painful, no. but it actually grows. It grows. The treatment Ooh, to treat scary. it was, was treatment. Now, some other uh, breast cancer survivors have the pain in the breast. I didn't have any of that. The only indicator that I had was the lump in my breast. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you have to go through several treatments. So MRIs, CAT scans, and one, I was originally diagnosed mm -hmm. as stage two. Once I had my partial mastectomy, um, so I was able to keep the original set, as I <laughs> like to call the girls. Um, so I, I was able to keep them. And from there, it found out that it spread to under my arm into my lymph nodes. So from there, I said the treatment plan had to be aggressive. So I had to have chemo. I had to have radiation. So I, was, I had to do at least 16 rounds of chemo and six weeks wow. of radiation. I was able to complete 15 out of the 16 rounds of chemo, and I did the whole thing of uh, radiation. So being diagnosed of May 2018, I didn't finish all of my active treatment until May of 2018. So wow. it was a very long process and chemo takes a lot out of your body. I think out of everything out of my uh, active treatment plan, chemo was the hardest because, you know, one thing that everyone sees is mm -hmm. that you lose your hair. And I was already prepared for that. But you also have your, your nail beds, they darken. Um, you have nausea, you have vomiting, um, you have constipation, you have diarrhea. Um, and it, it's, it's as much as a physical fight as, as well as an emotional and a spiritual fight because um, for those in the faith, sometimes we can question God and wonder why things happen the Very way good. they have. Uh -huh. But I, I, I took the opportunity and I, and I say, well, since it didn't make sense why I got this disease, yes. I figured it was an opportunity to give God glory. So if God needed to use me to go through this thing in order to help bless somebody else, then that's what we needed to do. So, and then it's an emotional one because as you see your body deteriorating, because chemo not only des destroys the bad cells, it destroys the good cells as well. And that means it could be hard to walk. Um, it could be hard just to talk or just to get up and just do your normal things that we take for granted. Just waking up and going to the restroom, you take all of those things for granted. Um, and that's a very emotional toll and you have to constantly keep fighting. So when you hear the words that uh, keep fighting, it's not just physical, it's a mental game as well. And you have to constantly encourage yourself all the time um, to know that God hasn't left you and that you can make it and you can fight. And it's so important to have a strong support system to be able to encourage you when you have your low moments as well, because there's sometimes that you're not gonna wanna even encourage yourself, 
but having that um, uh, support system and my husband has been awesome through the whole process we have yeah. four children yes yeah. thank you yeah. we have four children at home and at the time i was diagnosed the um, age range was from 11 all the way down to one and he had to help take the responsibility of really being mother and father because physically i couldn't always do everything and the kids didn't know we were private about the whole thing because, you know, our older two, again, were 11 and oh, 10. Okay. And we didn't want to interfere with their schooling and things like or that. Or alarm them to, yes, Right. As well as, you know, with being pastor and first lady, um, you're already in the spotlight. We didn't want our children to have to worry about another thing where people coming up to them, asking them how I was doing instead of just coming straight to me or going straight to him. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to, we wanted to really make sure that they were going to be okay through this process. So as I lost my hair, I wore a wig. My church family didn't know. As my eyebrows and eyelashes started to um, fade away and, and come off, I learned how to make my face. So you I know how to beat my face. Yes. <laughs> I learned how to beat my face. And, God's children. Yes. Got their presentation going. That's yes. nice. So I, I am so thankful that God allowed me to appear normal to everyone. You know, some knew that something was off about me because it seemed mm. like I always had some type of cold or, or I wasn't as energetic. I'm a very energetic person. Um, but Was that the chemo uh, effect doing that to you? Absolutely, because it... It, it seems uh, like the chemo it, is more of a problem than a solution. It is, it is. But, I mean, it helps uh -huh. ensure that the cancer doesn't spread because even though I had the surgery and it took all of the cancer that was under my arm and in my breast, it can go through your lymph nodes and through your bloodstream. So just in case a little piece of cancer went through down my leg or something like that, the chemo was designed to kill all of those cells to ensure that it, that it hasn't spread elsewhere. I understand that. Matter of fact, uh, 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 two days ago, I got the news after we did a uh, a, a, a regional event for uh, 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 Franklin R. Jakes that, that was on the show just a while ago, and uh, he had cancer. He had uh, some type of cancer that was on his skin. I, I'm giving it an S or a C or something, and well, they they removed it. Mm -hmm. it. It was it was it was a knot, and they removed it, and that was a few weeks ago. I think they said the following week. It came back and kept growing. And they said that was a uh, progressive. Yeah. That's what I look for the word progressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what happened. You saying that it just spreads. Right. It spreads. It spreads. And that's, that's dangerous. That's yeah. scary. So if I didn't have chemo or radiation, yes. my cancer had a chance of coming back by 50%. So by completing both chemo and radiation, it dropped it down to in the teens. So I'm not all the way down to zero, but I'll take 13 or 10% versus 50, you know? Very good, yes. Absolutely. Well, that's a blessing in the zone. Yes. Are, are you still, still, I'm still, still in still, remission, thank you. Still Lord, remission. Still in remission. So during my fight during this time, um, both of my parents ended up having cancer, uh, which I talk about in the book. So uh, I was diagnosed, like I said, in May in 2017, later on in the year, uh, closer to that's August, September. Uh, my father's yes. uh, bladder cancer came back. And Ooh. I talked about how sometimes it's not the cancer, it's the treatment that is uh, more damaging to your body than what the cancer is. And my father didn't want to have treatment this go around, so basically he's terminal at this point. So now, as I'm going through chemo myself, I am trying to grieve at this point. I'm starting to grieve because now I have to accept the fact that he didn't want treatment. And my mother, you know, she just, again, just buried her mother earlier that year. Now her husband oh now has cancer and her daughter has cancer. So it was a lot on her. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as I finished cancer, I'm sorry, as I finished um, chemo in mm -hmm. January, he passed away in March. And right after he passes away and, and we have the funeral and, and bury him and put in his final resting place, my mother was then diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. She was not a smoker. Mm. doesn't run in our family again so it's like you know what is going on and again it can question your faith and like okay why guy why are you allowing all these things uh to happen in in your life but i still felt that god was using it to give it, to give it glory even though i lost one parent and i wasn't sure if i was going to lose another one i knew that god was still faithful to me and he was still faithful to my family i still was able to 
be a mother to my children. I was still able to be a wife to my husband. I was still, still able to be a first lady to my church family, and I was still able to be a worship leader on the praise team. I'm, I also sing as well. Very so good. God still yes. was able to be with me in all those things. I knew he wasn't going to leave me alone. And even when my mother passed away, even when my mother had passed away, right after I completed radiation, I knew that that, you know, she, she mentioned earlier that God won't give you too much that you can bear. And mm -hmm. I knew that this was a better path for my mom. You know, again, she had to deal with her mother. She had to deal with her daughter. She had to deal with her husband. And then she had to deal with herself. So God saw fit to be able to heal her in a different way. So he still healed us both. He just healed me one way and he healed her a different way. Wow. Wow. God's taking over the show today. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> Somebody needed to hear this. Somebody yeah. definitely needed to hear this. The, uh, uh, I mean, you, you know, that, wow, you've got me so many directions here. Cause yeah. I'm thinking about, I mean, you had a cancer that was spreading, that now it's remission. You have, which God's holding that. That was, that's mm -hmm. powerful. And then your mother had a, 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 a lung cancer mm -hmm. and she don't even smoke. Right. Yeah, you know, that's funny. No, it, that's not even science. There's something wrong in this picture if you don't have faith in God. Right. You know, God has, it, it don't keep putting some good in God's taking care of your family and your mother. Mm -hmm. They always say, you know, about, well, I'm not going to say, you know, uh, 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 whether, I mean, each individual, you, you have your own choice, you know, your own addictions or whatever. But when you have somebody that doesn't do those things, yeah and they go through it, then there's got to be a God somewhere to do the healing. Absolutely. Okay, so it, it's, you knock out all the, see, that, everything falls in place. Mm -hmm. So God knocks all that out. That doesn't take no, no, no Scientology what I was getting at. It didn't take knowledge. It has to take faith, Amen. hope and faith. And, and, and faith, what's it, uh, faith of a mustard seed? Yeah, faith of a mustard seed. Mustard seed, and, 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 and what was, it blows my mind, huh? Faith without hope is dead. Mm -hmm. That's right. Faith without hope is dead. Thank you for that. Thank you. And, and uh, uh, look, look I'm, I'm going out to the audience for more faith with hope. That's what I'm talking about. And, and that's, that's what's called Holy Ghost TV. And in that scripture, I like a, another translation that says, faith without works is dead. Faithful, yes. And you know, as Christians, we talk about, we go to church every single Sunday and we're told to have faith, but then when we're hit with a trial, we then ask, God, why us? That is the opportunity to allow our light to shine through them, you know, and, and to show the faith that God has placed in us to, to let his glory shine. That is the opportunity to show other people that God is real, so showing us to question who God is and what God is. How are you able to still smile when you have cancer? How are you able to still smile when everything has been lost? Yes. It's the power of God, and you have to be able to display yes. that faith. Yes, yes, yes. That's, see, that's real world stuff. That's what I love about it. It's real world stuff. You know, she didn't jump up and shout, hey, look at me, I'm a Christian. No, no. Christ is in her, okay? And, and, and just by her faith, her walk with God and what God does. This is the real world stuff. That, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. When you share the stuff that you go through, and like, like she said about why me, you know, instead she also, not only just from why me, but there's like, why is, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, this is real, real stuff. But then she knew she had to hold the fort in the family wise, you know, as a matter of fact, the family itself, I had to throw, throw them in here, right. to, to hold each other as a bond. That's mm -hmm. a God thing. And there wasn't a, a dissension or falling apart. There was a coming together, yeah. a unity. And that's another way you could say unity in the body of Christ. When you have man and a woman, you know, they become one. Absolutely. It's still what? Unity in the what? body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's on a small scale. Mm -hmm. So, and, and plus you, uh, I mean, you're a, mayor, uh, 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 you're a worship uh, singer. Mm -hmm. Okay. You run a business. Yes. You're the first lady of a church and get to keep your presentation, even though it feels like, I'm getting cheery. Yeah. feel like you're falling apart and you're still putting yourself Absolutely. together. And they're going, is there something wrong? No, she, she, is she, they can't tell. That's, that's right. God holding you up. Can't tell. And it's and, funny, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean yes, to cut you ahead. off, <laughs> that, you know, I actually got compliments from, oh, I see you got lashes on today. Oh, I see. I like how you're doing your makeup, not knowing that I was masking what was going on 
underneath all of that. Yes, that's, see, that's, that's where you don't do the fallout and go, oh, why, poor me. No. You know, got, got, selfish. selfless. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we have in church here. <laughs> yeah. hey, it's all right. That's all right. It, it's it's refresher. You know, I've got me all cheery eyed. Yes. I can't stop crying. That's what I said. I told you about the Holy Ghost kid because that's when, when, when he does that, that's 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 what you call let me shut up. Yeah. You Amen. are a blessing. Go ahead, continue. Yeah. That's the reason why this uh -huh. book was published, because originally before my husband knew, before anyone knew, it was only going to be a journal. I just wanted to have a journal for myself because sometimes we have what I call a spiritual amnesia. We go through a trial in our life and then uh -huh. we get over that trial and we forget how God has brought us over. So Very I good. wanted something to remind myself of everything that I was going through. And as time went on and I saw a television program as I was having a bad chemo day mm -hmm. um, and I just saw how again how cancer affect these women and I said you know what God didn't give me this to just keep it to myself he wants me to be able to not only just give him glory once you know I am was healed from everything but to be able to just encourage someone to inspire someone and to motivate someone uh, to be able to get through this and that's why this book was um, designed I ended up I have devotionals in there as well and it's funny because some of the devotions are like seven, eight years old. I was writing, I used to have what I call power text um, mm -hmm. a few years ago, and I just used to just, whatever God placed on my heart, I just, everyone who was in my context, I would just send it to them. And I just saved them, and then eventually, you know what, it just seemed to fit in with this story because some of those, mm -hmm. uh, the, the power texts were to encourage and to aspire and to, to help motivate um, everyone. So it talks about, um, again, the nitty gritty of cancer, the financial piece of cancer, because um, there's one, one line in there. I said how uh, my MRI, my CAT scan and surgery was just 34,000 alone. Ooh. That's not including chemo. That's not including radiation. So just about how you have to make sure you have the proper insurance to uh, make sure that you're financially uh, financially afloat um, so you don't fall in financial toxicity um, be able to uh, again have the support system to get you through um, I talk about all of the side effects that I go through because most cancer survivors don't like to complain about what's going on um, I talk about what it's like to be through the lens of a supporter um, how you know people will sometimes see about me but not see about my spouse and sometimes I would think that he had the heavier load because you know, with him being a pastor, he still had to preach every single week, let alone me just singing. He had to preach every single week. And you know, it's weird that, you know, when you go through something, that's what's happening. To jump, then I will do it right into the fire and walk straight through it. And if you knew, I bet that's just what you would say. I guess the only thing for me to do is. 
never let you know just how I'm feeling Cause I don't want to know if you don't feel the same It's a shame Don't you wake my daydream Cause it's so real it seems Maybe someday I'll get my Don't you wake my daydream